Welcome along, everybody, to our GCTV Live studio. This is Mexico City, and without a shadow of a doubt, the brightest, most vibrant stage of the season thus far. My name is Mark Lewis. This is GCTV. And at the moment in the Global Champions League, we have joint leaders, and that makes for rather exciting viewing as well. The Count Stars and Rome Gladiators find themselves joint on 44 points, and the home team, the Mexico Amigos, in third, just two points further behind. Coming up on the show today, we take a slightly deeper dive into Reasonback International. They were winners here back in 2023. They are dealing with injuries, new riders, and a disappointing stage in Miami. We talked to Lorenzo De Luca, who will be without Laura Kraut this weekend. We talked to Thibaut Spitz as well as Muda Ziyada, who's been in sensational form at the start of 2024. Frederick and Rosie are standing by as well. We welcome you to Mexico City. We welcome you to stage three of the Global Champions. League, but first, let's go back to Miami and remind you what took place. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Miami Beach in Florida for the second stage of Global Champions League. Is Rome Gladiators powered by Clay My Horse TV and now De Luca. It's good for the time, 78. Lorenzo De Luca, double clear for Rome Gladiators. It is double clear and in time. And so the eighth stand, and that is the new leading time. Second half, powered by H&M. We lost horses. Time is good. Marlin Bayard Johnson with H&M Indiana for Stockholm Hearts. An assist maybe for Philip Hart for the lead. It is a clear and it starts with a clear from Marlin Bayard Johnson and H&M Indiana. And now Stockholm Hearts have got a chance at their first podium of the season. Thank you. Oh, Nicola Philip Hartz. Oh, and it's gone at the first fence. All the margins are gone now. All the margins are gone. At the first fence, the first time that we see a fault, we're fighting for podiums now. Yeah. FMS, the man who struggled at the end of the season, who oh, crumbled under the pressure, <laughs> now comes home with four penalties. If it's just a time penalty, the Lions guaranteed, no, there goes the rail. And now the time penalty will come into play as well. And so they go behind Rome Gladiators. I looked at Laura and when you see Laura riding, it's just amazing. So it gave me so much energy. It's true. <laughs> What a performance from the Rome Gladiators, powered by ClipMyHorse.tv. They even admitted to us that they were surprised that they were able to get on top of the podium. As we mentioned, no uh, Laura Kraut this weekend here in Mexico City. So Lorenzo De Luca and Michael Duffy will have to do the job to try and make it two from two. Let's show you what the overall rankings look like right now in the Global Champions League to give you some better perspective as to how things stand currently in the 2024 season. The Cun Stars and Rome Gladiators as we mentioned, joint leaders. The Prague Lions, powered by the Czech equestrian team, once again are here with homeboy favorites Fernando Martinez Soma and the very talented Thibaut Spitz. The Doha Falcons have been good and find themselves knocking on the door in a top four position. New York Empire, powered by Lugano Diamonds, currently find themselves in seventh place. That is the top half of the overall rankings. Of course, there is a second page to show you as well. Rieserback International, powered by Kingsland equestrian they will want to be a lot higher than eighth and focus art united former gcl champions multiple gcl time champions will be unhappy with where they find themselves now in the early stages of the 2024 season well Speaking of Rieserback International, speaking about how they need to improve and get things back on track for the rest of the season. They've got a few changes this weekend, and we'll talk to you about that coming up in a few moments' time. One of the big changes continues to be the fact that there's no Owen McMahon. He continues to deal with an injury. He actually joins us live on Zoom from Rieserback. Owen, oh, thank you for joining us. Very nice to have you on the show. We are missing you here in Mexico City. For those that aren't aware, can you tell us about the injury? Uh, yeah, so uh, I was competing in Oliva in January and um, very simple, stupid fall. I was trotting a horse around and she stumbled and I broke my elbow. Uh, initially we thought it was like a four to six week thing, um, but the first uh, surgery didn't really go as planned. So then I had to do another surgery and it turned into a 10, 12 week thing. 
So, Owen, how is the recovery going? It sounds like there's been quite a lot of work to go, but the positive thing is I've been told by your teammates here that you are expected to be back quite soon. Yeah, no, I'm back. Started back riding this week. A um, bit rusty, but um, I'm, planning, I'm planning on uh, competing in Shanghai. Okay, positive for the team. Talk to me about the impact that this has had on the team. Reason back, sadly, is no stranger to the injuries. We had plenty in 2023, and now again, the bad luck seems to have followed you. From a planning perspective, from a strategy perspective, how has your injury affected the team? Um, yeah, it affected us quite badly, I would say. Um, uh, I, was, I was meant to go to Miami and Mexico. Uh, so we are actually just there with two riders, um, and you saw what happened last week. Um, Philip Schultz Tabov had to use his second horse in the second round, and um, it didn't go as planned. So, so we probably lost a few points there. And uh, Richie had to come into the team, although I think uh, getting a rider in the top ten of the world isn't a disadvantage this week. All right, well, Owen, we can welcome you back in Shanghai with open arms in a couple of weeks' time. For now, continue with the recovery, and we'll see you again soon. Owen McMahon joining us live via Zoom from Riesenbeck, giving us some perspective and some updates on how he's doing for his injury and what it will mean for the team. He admits, of course, it's a massive, massive blow, but that leaves Richard Vogel and, of course, Philip Schulz at top off here this weekend to compete in Mexico City. We caught up with the two Riesenbeck riders to find out how they're doing this week. Yeah, to be honest, uh, Miami was really not uh, not our best experience again. Yeah, I think the venue and all the things around is really, really nice. But uh, for the horses, it's it's kind of something special with the beach there and stuff. And if you have a little bit sensitive horse, it's sometimes difficult. Um, I, I had the, the problems last year with Clemens, but this year he was even much better. But uh, yeah, then we made the exchange and um, shouldn't have done it, maybe. <laughs> from a potential lead all the way down to last in just 87 seconds. Philip Schulte top off. Yeah, it is difficult for sure. We have uh, last year the injuries of, I think, Ludger, Philip. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was the year before in 2022, but <laughs> we, had, we had so many injuries. Um, yeah, this year we have uh, different reasons for, for people not available, but uh, yeah, we got the chance to to make an exchange for one show. Uh, we have Richie now on the team. There's everything everything possible, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, it's, my, it's my first time here at the Global in Mexico. So uh, yeah, it's a great venue. It's a very impressive show, so yeah. I worked for Ludger for two and a half years. We know each other quite well and yeah, he knows my horses. We, we went through the horses. I have uh, Cidello here. He's a quite new horse for us and uh, Tepano Balubi. So uh, I think you know the key is, uh, or the goal is to make a good plan for the horses. Don't run them too much. Uh, there's already enough classes before the team uh, classes. And then I have two very nice horses here, so I think I can split it up. Do Cidello uh, normally in the first team class and then Cepano Balube in the second team class. Oh, to be honest, I, I don't see myself as a senior rider. Um, I think Richie is so, so experienced. The pressure is on. The, 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 the expectations are high enough, but uh, yeah, uh, he's a competitive rider, very strong rider. Um, yeah, uh, we have a good relationship and uh, we try to deliver the best result possible for Riesenbeck International this week. Oh, we hope for the best results and, and for sure we hope uh, to be not at the same ending of the list again so that, that we can maybe make a good result, maybe even a win this year. But yeah, this arena is for sure a bit challenging because the fences are spooky enough. Uh, there's a good atmosphere, which we always like, but for some horses it's creating a bit of difficult atmosphere as well. But uh, yeah, it's an amazing venue and uh, we are all happy to be here.
So the very positive thing for Riesa Bank International here is that they have the ability to bring in a very talented rider like Richard Vogel into the lineup. But you might be asking just how and why, outside of a transfer window, is Riesa Bank International allowed to bring in a rider for a particular stage? Well, if you read the rule books, and that's why we are here for you, to help you, to educate, to inform, there is a rule of Rule 2.5. Let me bring it up onto the screen. It will help you understand it slightly better. There are certain reasons and certain times that riders and teams are allowed to make some changes. The substitution outside of the transfer window is only allowed for possible medical reasons in the case of an athlete being unable to compete for a minimum of 45 days. McMahon has been out for 45 days and that rule 2.5 allows athlete substitution outside of a transfer window. So Richard Vogel comes in for Riesebach International based on this ruling. That is how and why he is available here today. Well, enough of Riesebach International. What about your joint leaders of the Rome Gladiators powered by ClipMyHorse.tv? As we said, no Laura Kraut, only Michael Duffy, only Lorenzo De Luca. Can they make it two for two? Well, we caught up with the Rome Gladiators. You are currently top of the leaderboard, joint top of the leaderboard with CanStars powered by Iron Dames. How does that feel? It feels amazing. We, we had a really great victory in Miami and really, really excited about tomorrow for, the, for our world. Well, let's just talk about Miami briefly. Reflect on some of those rounds for me. We had uh, solid rounds. Uh, like to be in the team with Michael and Laura is always very exciting and uh, really strong riders uh, and uh, we, we gave our our best the horses jumped incredible the the show was amazing so we we ended really well the the weekend it was such a brilliant end of the weekend there was so much emotion particularly from you and Laura after round two how important is that team partnership together yeah it's very important uh, and uh, me and Laura we were uh, Rome gladiators uh, teammates a uh, long time ago so it's just uh, it, we, we're good teammates uh, and to have uh, good riders like Michael Duffy that he also won the Grand Prix like he makes us uh, really strong uh, and uh, really together for, for the team competition. We well, need to be strong this week because you don't have Laura this week. It's just you and Michael Duffy. Have you discussed what the plan might be? Yeah, of course, uh, we're going to jump uh, today. Uh, there are two big classes, so we're going to decide after that but the both horses they they in great form so we're just gonna see after today what's the best plan for tomorrow and have the horses traveled well and they've recovered from miami yeah yeah they are fresh they feel amazing here so like we're really looking forward for tomorrow also you kind of need them fresh because this is a, a different arena to miami what are the different requirements you need here well, okay, our horses are really good horses, so of course, uh, like for, for them, it's just a little adjustment. I jumped a small class yesterday with Denver de Talma and he jumped unbelievable. So I'm looking forward to jump today in the big class Cappuccino and uh, Michael is going to jump both horses today as well. It's a big, big ring, but the, the ground, the service is unbelievable and uh, they, they, they jumped amazing here. So we just need to be focused and uh, ride well as well. Catching up with Lorenzo De Luca yesterday in preparation for the Global Champions League. In fact, I've just seen him walk past my shoulder getting into the ring here, getting ready for GCL round one. He is still very happy with the team that they have and knows that with alongside Michael Duffy, they can still make some magic. Let's talk about the start list here. Let's talk about how the teams are going to come out. That's the big question. How did the draw go? Where are these teams coming out? Well, Madrid Emotion will be the first team to come. Speaking of Rome Gladiators, powered by ClipMyHorse.tv, they will be sixth. Great draw for the Scandinavian Vikings and the Prague Lions, powered by the Czech equestrian team. We spoke about the talented Tibor Spitz. We spoke about the inform Fernando Martinez Soma, who returns home to Mexico. They are 13th. And then, Kunst Stars, powered by the Iron Dames. Well, they find themselves in 12th. Rieserbach International, as we mentioned, having heard from them a little bit earlier on, start in 10th place today. 
That is the start list. Those are the 14 teams competing in today's Global Champions League round one. The big question now becomes of which of those teams is going to be the favorite? Who have we identified as the teams to look out for? That is the idea. Well, Frederick Tabaka will be standing by for us in a moment's time. We'll go to him to find out who is on his mind and who is he identified and just how and why they are the favorites for today's GCL competition. So, Frederick Tabaka standing by for us. Let's see if we can get in touch with you. Let's talk about favorites. Frederick, who have you identified? Who is looking good? Well, Mark, how about I start with a banger, with a little bit of a surprise. One of my favorites is Shanghai Swans, the team that didn't do so well in Doha, and maybe even less in uh, Miami. But I do expect um, a revival from uh, the from uh, Shanghai Swans, Remontada, because they brought Daniel Deusser in the team with Otello de Guldeboom. The horse has jumped really well out in uh, Miami. Strong yesterday as well, alongside now EIC, Quantum Robin with Max Kuder. So in round one, I do have my eye on uh, Shanghai Swans, also on Madrid in motion, but the difficult situation with Madrid is that they are first to go. They are the first team out of the gate, and that might make it slightly more difficult for them. And with the new transfer, of course, with Richard Vogel coming in, you cannot take your eye off Riesenbeck International, powered by Kingsland, also a team with at least three stars behind their name. And of course, you would ask, well, what about the podium finishers of uh, last week? Rome Gladiators. I don't have them in that top five, top four, but I do have Prague Lions in there. I do expect a little bit from them in uh, this uh, first round. And we're just talking about first round because in between first and second round, managers can, of course, still make the necessary horse and rider changes. But if you ask me, keep your eye on Shanghai Swans, maybe here in uh, Mexico City, where it went really, really sour for them last year. Now, 365 days later, I think it is a start here for Shanghai Swans to come back. I also like that you brought up the Prague Lions, Fred, because I think a lot of people were very impressed with them in Miami. We spoke about Impress K. We spoke about Tibor Spitz. FMS comes home. Lady van der Hartenhove today. That change in surface, how is that going to affect them? You still feel that these two men with this, no backup again, Prague Lions, they're still on your list. Talk to me about the horse selections, though. Well, Thibaut Spitz, both his horses really fare well on this ground, if uh, you ask me. Um, Thibaut with Impress or with Calvino, big striding horses, that seems to suit them well. The only question mark you could point around or put behind the name of Lady van der Harten, who she jumped for clear and four in uh, Miami, jumped really well, felt some horses feel a little bit um, stressed in that ring. She really settled in that ring. Uh, what I saw from her on day one, she's still on that same level, on that same vibe. So I do expect um, quite a bit from both Thibaut Spitz and from uh, Fernando Martinez Sommer. And trust me, in front of home crowd, the Mexican will try a little bit more, a little bit harder. And maybe that uh, might put them at uh, the top of the board after the first round. But don't forget, Mark, being a leader in Global Champions League after round one is not always a very good position. Think of Valkeswaard back in Doha. They dropped way down the order in the second round. The same happened yesterday, or last week, sorry, with the New York Empire. They also dropped from first down to the bottom. That was the case for those leading teams after round So maybe four Prague lines don't try to lead after round one. Second place might be good enough, and you make a good call about FMS coming back home. Frederick Tabaka, thank you very much. Love getting able to pick his brain. We'll talk to him a little bit more, more technicals, the analysis of the course walk that has been set up once again by Peter Grant here this afternoon. Speaking of the Prague Lions, speaking of the young, impressive Thibaut Spitz, we caught up with the Belgian yesterday to find out how he's reacted to the performance in Miami and what we can expect here this weekend in Mexico. Miami has been uh, unreal. It's been uh, yeah, way, way better than I ever imagined it would be. Um, but now, yeah, definitely it's, it's a new week, new goals. So um, we're very uh, motivated for this week to, to do it as good as last week. As a team, which horses have you brought with you? Uh, I'm here again with uh, Impress and Calvino. So uh, I see Impress will normally jump the first round of the team. And the second we'll see. What about Fernando? I think Fernando is uh, it's a home show for him. I think he'll be really motivated uh, to, to, to do a good result tomorrow. Let's talk about Impress K for a minute. You're an under-25 rider. You brought a nine-year-old to Miami, and it paid off. You're coming into Mexico City now. It's a different arena. What do you need 
as a, it's a different place. What do you need here? I think you definitely need scope and uh, that's, that's uh, definitely my advantage. Um, I think I just had the opening class with him. Felt good, felt quite easy, um, felt relaxed on the arena. So um, yeah, that gives confidence for tomorrow. Does the podium in Miami, and you were only the two of you in Miami, you're only the two of you again in, in Mexico City, does it give you a boost coming into this weekend? Yeah, definitely. It says, uh, I think it says we're, we're ready for, um, for this level. Um, that was what I doubted a bit for before coming here. But now as Miami was really good, uh, yeah, it definitely gives a boost for, for this week. Um, as yeah, we're here trying to do our best for the Prague Lions. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll try to do it good again this week. I know that Fernando said that Niels has been such a, an inspiration to you and very helpful to you both. Has he spoken to you before Mexico? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I called him, I think, the Wednesday um, to see a bit of plan. Um, now, yeah, obviously, it's, it's uh, late at home, but I'll call him uh, tomorrow before the teams. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, for a guy like me, I was, it's, it's the first time for me being here, doing these kind of things, to be able to rely on someone like him with such experience, uh, it's very helpful. The very talented Thibaut Spitz jumping on the equally talented nine-year-old Impress K. So impressive in Miami. Now we change to a completely different surface. Can the pairing once again perform? We'll find out in a few moments' time. For now, we take a break. When we return, we talk to the Shanghai Swans. We get some analysis from the course that's been designed by Peter Grant and chat to another homegrown favorite. That and more here today on GCTV. Welcome back to GCTV. Welcome back to the beautifully vibrant and colorful Mexico City. Stage three of the 2024 season in the Global Champions League. We have a lot to talk about before we get to round one of the GCL. And one of the pre-competition pre favorites that Freddy Tabaka spoke about was the Shanghai Swans. Rosie Tapner standing by alongside Daniel Doiser. Rosie, over to you. Let's get some reaction from Double D. Thank you, Mark. I am in the arena with Daniel Deuter coming in for the Shanghai Swans this week. First of all, how good is it to be back in the season here at Stage 3? Yeah, of course, it's a nice feeling to be back uh, in the team. Um, I hope I can also deliver and give some nice results and then uh, the feeling would be even better. The team haven't had the best start to the season. Do you think this is the place, this is the stage that we're going to see you come forward? 
Yeah, I hope so. Um, like you said, we didn't have the best start, but uh, actually the results were good. We just didn't uh, choose the right horses and uh, right uh, horse combinations for the team. Um, but uh, yeah, actually a few results were very consistent and we did a little bit different today and hopefully it works out, yeah. Well, you've had a little look at the course now. It's a big, imposing track. Where do you think are going to be the trickiest lines to ride? Yeah, the course is really a combination on um, yeah, really, really open lines uh, combined with then short lines somewhere in the corner on a short side next to the people. Um, there are a couple of lines, but I think it starts already on fence number three, two, number four. Uh, from one to two, we really have actually not a line. It's really one time going around, uh, yeah, across the whole place into the corner, like we see a little bit there on, uh, on number two. And then we have quite, yeah, quite quick coming number three to number four, which is a distance of five strides with the Liverpool underneath close to the people. Um, I think there we have already a couple of horses that A, get used to the fact that one to two is very long and maybe get a little bit relaxed. Uh, maybe other horses get also a little bit tense coming out of the turn uh, close to the people. I think that's already the first line that uh, could create a little bit trouble. It's very early on as well. Daniel, I wish you the best of luck and the team as well. Thank you for chatting to us. That is Doyce's take on the course though. And I'm wondering, what does Frederick think of the course? Uh, thank you very much, Rosie. Well, Peter Grant and I had a chat um, about the course. He sent me this uh, graphic, and so we can have a look at uh, what he uh, has positioned for us and what he has drawn. And normally, we would always talk um, about the lines, but how about talking about the non-related distances first? I just want to point this out to you. This is the line two. The line from three to four, from two to three, from four to five, from six all the way around to seven, and then from nine to ten, and eleven to twelve. Those are fairly unrelated distances. They uh, have nothing to do with each other, but that's all about the turns. There's so much room where you can go wide and casual around and take your time that. Already one, and I don't expect the time allowed to be um, unbelievably tight. But Peter Grant has allowed those riders to really go wide. And if they if they're not on the ball, if they don't have their eye on the ball, they can really lose a lot of time in those first uh, in those all those long turns and those long lines. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Dorsey spoke about this line actually, the line from three to four. Now, what you don't see on this 3D is that this is actually the lowest part of the ring, and this is the highest part of the ring. There is a 75 meter um, distance between the, the, the lowest and the highest part, so there's quite a slope actually going up in this direction on uh, this course. So if you look at what Dorsey just spoke about, this line, which is five strides, that's actually slightly uphill. So you have to make sure that you get quite a bit of jump over this fence to make your five strides work. But that's not the most difficult line just yet. But I, as we are discussing that slope, I want to take you to a different um, line more at the end of the course. It is the line from seven here into 8A and 8B. Now, built on what would normally be a full stride approach into a double of upright. Now, if you look at the line, the distance that he has positioned, those full strides would be normal. However, as this is downhill, as you go down the slope, the full strides will get a little bit shorter. And there's an interesting novelty. Normally, if we talk, for example, the courses of Zadi, we would see a short distance in Side the double of upright. Well, not so with Peter Grant. Peter Grant has given them 8 meters 50, which is actually a long stride inside that double of upright. So there you see how different course designers built a double of uprights completely different. But the slope uphill, and here the slope downhill, will already have its uh, effect on uh, these fences, Mark. And that is more or less some insights of the course that Peter Grant has uh, built here. The slope will have its effect, but do keep your eye on the clock and on those turns.
All right, thank you, Frederick. A few points to look out for the slope and the time. How important is that going to be? Thank you very much, Frederick the Bucker. You're off to your commentary booth. You go. He'll be providing you the commentary in English today throughout the rest of Global Champions League today. Frederick the Bucker with some insight and analysis into what has been designed by uh, Peter Grant, our course designer here this week. Now, speaking of some riders who may well be feeling very comfortable here, one man perhaps who's been jumping here for many, many years, Carlos Hancorero, joins us inside the ring. Peter, oh Peter, <laughs> Rosie Tapner is standing by for us alongside her hometown hero. Rosie, let's hear from him. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. I'm with Carlos now on the home ground. This is a home show for you. Just how excited are you? Uh, it's hard to describe in words. I mean, we don't really get to jump so much in, in our home country and to have an event like this 10 minutes from where I grew up is just unbelievable. I mean, the crowds are the loudest I think anywhere and they really make you feel at home make you f feel something that you really don't feel at any other show just tell us a little bit more history about that you've had here in this arena because it was a long time ago that you first started here yeah I think I was here for the first few editions and one of my best memories I've had in my career as a young rider I think I won uh, one of the ranking classes here in the two-star I think it was maybe the the second edition we had here I was 15 years old and it was unbelievable. I still remember it like to this day, the whole course and everything. So it's a special place for yeah. you, but also it's a special place to Mexico City. Just tell us how iconic Campo Marte is, the place that we are here. Yeah, I mean, it's in the middle of the city and the, probably the one of the best areas, I would say. It's very centrical. Everyone from around the city gathers up this weekend. I mean, many people don't even know so much about horses but it's just the excitement of such a huge event and uh, it's amazing do you think you'll feed off the home crowd today i've seen you taking pictures and giving autographs all day when you come into this arena for your round do you think you'll feed off that energy i hope i will i mean you certainly get a different feeling than anywhere else you know when the mexican riders come in everyone is super loud and if you get a clear round which i hope i do it's just an explosion so i'm i'm can't wait to see if I get that feeling later. Just quickly, you've had a quick look at the course. What did you think? Yeah, honestly, I think it's the best course we've seen this weekend so far. Uh, I think the course designer really used up this huge arena. It's uh, big open spaces to really let the horses canter, but then he also asks for some very delicate tests to come back and test the, the carefulness of the horses and the rideability. So I think he did a fantastic job. Carlos, I wish you the very best of luck for you and the whole of the team. I'll let you go and get prepared. Thank you so much. There we have it, Mark. Carlos is ready for the challenge today. And I tell you what, if he goes clear, this crowd is going to go wild. Absolutely. Rosie Tapner, thank you very much. And thank you to Carlos Hancorero. There will be eight out the gate today. Well, Mexico Amigos. And as Rosie says, if there is a clear, imagine a double clear for the Mexico Amigos at some stage today during GCL round one, then every single person in the grandstands here behind us, they are going to go absolutely crazy. We are moments away from the start of Global Champions League round one. We've identified the favorites. We've looked at the course. We've spoken to previous winners. We've seen how and why Reasonback can make changes let all of that now go into effect. We say thank you for joining us for the pre-studio here on GCTV. Stay with us with your GCTV live pass to watch every single moment of Global Champions League Round 1. It is next, live from Mexico City.